Are you wondering what you need to do to get a home loan in Montana? In this video, we'll talk to a home loan expert here and we'll tell you all the steps you need to take and the different types of loans and everything you need to know about getting a loan in Montana. All right, so I climbed all the way up this mountain to give you a better view of Montana. So the least you can do is subscribe to our channel. And when you do, don't forget to hit the little bell and you'll be notified every time we make a new video about Montana. So we get questions all the time about getting home loans here in Montana. So I wanted to do a video that kind of went over everything you need to know about uh, loans here in Montana, the types of loans, the credit score you need, everything you need to know, whether you're a first time home buyer or whether you're somebody moving from out of state so I'm bringing on Natalie Lenderman, who is a mortgage officer at Bay Equity Home Loans in Kalispell. And as you'll see, she's very knowledgeable and full of information. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay. As I said, we have Natalie Lenderman here and she is a friend of mine and a great loan officer here in Montana. And she was kind enough to come on and answer a few questions. So Natalie, why don't you introduce yourself and tell everybody how long you've been in the business and all of that. Yeah. Good stuff. I'm Natalie Linderman. I am a loan officer at Bay Equity Home Loans. We have an office in Whitefish and in Kalispell. Um, I started my career in banking and mortgage banking in 2006. So I've been in the business for about 15 years. And I love Montana. I live in Whitefish. Um, I have two young kids and yeah, I'm a transplant from Atlanta, um, but I've been in Montana for almost 20 years. So a little bit about me. All right. Well, let's get right into it. I get a lot of questions from people all the time about uh, mortgages and loans and thought I would have the expert on here to answer them. And um, the first question I get all the time is, you know, just basically getting approved and how to go about that and what that entails. Sure. Well, at Bay Equity, make, we make it really simple. Um, I have a quick conversation with the client and then I send them a link to our online application. It doesn't cost anything. It's really easy to use. And once that application comes over, I'm going to look at the credit report and then I'm going to set up a needs list um, in our secure portal where they can upload bank statements, pay stubs, tax returns, the items that we're going to need to fully pre-approve that client for their purchase. So there's a major misconception with pre-qualification and pre-approval. They are not the same thing. Um, a pre-qualification is when a person just submits an application. We run credit. We run their, um, their profile through an automated underwriting system. And the pre-approval takes that next step. So we're actually looking for the guts of the file, the documentation that we're going to use through the loan process. So whether that's tax returns, if you're self-employed, or um, pay stubs from you know, wage earners, uh, we're going to look at the actual facts versus just stated income from the application. So, and then what are some of the credit scores I get asked all the time about, you know, on the, I, I know it varies and maybe you can get into that on the different types of loans, but um, just so yeah. basic. Yep. So um, most of our products start at a 620. It used to be 580, but since COVID hit, um, some of our investors are a little more wary with those lower credit scores. So um, typically I'd like to see at least a 620 and we look at all three credit um, FICO scores. So all three bureaus and we use the middle lowest score if there's multiple borrowers. So we're looking at the middle score, um, between the two. And then we base those product decisions based on, you know, that credit score. Gotcha. So if, if your credit isn't up to that point right now, is there anything, what can people Absolutely. do? Absolutely. So I do occasionally have clients that will come to me with a 617. So we're just under that benchmark and I have some tools that I use 
um, that will help simulate what it will take to get that person's credit score above a 620 in a short time frame. Um, so I am able to use those tools, but if the client knows already that their credit scores are in the 500s, I do have a company that I refer um, those people too, because I'm not the credit expert, I'm the mortgage expert. So um, I'm sending them off to someone that's going to take really good care of them and give them great advice and also keep them accountable for their goals that they set. So. All right. Um, and then uh, what everybody out there doesn't know um, is about three weeks ago, I had some clients that went through the approval process. They were, you know, they had gotten a mortgage from a national bank and they were trying to buy up here uh, in Kalispell. And I won't mention the bank's name, but everyone has heard of them. Um, and what happened was, is like three days before closing, they they blew it up, the loan blew up. So obviously without <laughs> mentioning names, uh, maybe you could talk about why that happens, why you should use someone local. And it seems like I mean, I haven't sold real estate in other states, but it seems like Montana, for whatever reason, has laws and issues here that um, some national banks can't handle for whatever reason. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it all across the board from the property not not fitting the, the bank's scenario or, or qualifications and not knowing that until the week before closing when the appraisal shows up to for this instance that client um just had you know a miscommunication with whoever they were working with and the biggest complaint that i heard from that client was he was talking to multiple people every time he called in and so when you're working with a local lender like myself at bay equity you're actually speaking with me and my my team um, and it's text message, it's email, it's phone call, it's whatever way you appreciate communicating. Um, and we're looking at all those details up front, not three weeks into the process. And that's why we really like getting clients pre-approved up front so that we're asking all those detailed questions. Hey, are you selling a house? Okay, you are. All right. Is that going to happen before or after you purchase in Montana? Okay, because that also has to be taken into account. So having a personalized lender um, locally on the ground here in Montana is, is very helpful. And then our reputation. I mean, people know that when they work with Bay Equity from the seller's side or from the seller's agent side, that they're going to get communicated to through the process. It's not they're in the dark until literally the day before closing when the lender says, okay, we're closing tomorrow. Here's, you know, the closing documents and funds. Um, there's some accountability um, that comes into play and, you know, it's, it's a part of our success. And have you seen, um, I've seen it, I'm sure you have too, but something like up at the ski resort, when people buy up there, there's 10 different HOAs and for some, whatever reason, Maybe you could talk about, I don't understand why that throws these people yeah. that are local into a frenzy. It does. Well, it's because um, these national banks or larger institutions, they're just not used to our area. And we have a lot of condos, um, especially on Whitefish Mountain Resort, um, that are in nightly, weekly rental pools or in what's called a condo tell. And Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have some pretty clear guidelines on what is required to be eligible for a condo for long term conventional financing. And, you know, maybe one of these larger banks just isn't familiar. They get the contract, they start processing, and then they get an HOA questionnaire back during the loan process and they realize oh no, this is in a resort. Oh no, this is a condo tell and it doesn't qualify. Um, that's one of the first questions that I ask when I speak with a buyer. Hey, let's talk about the property. Are you looking at a condo 
or are you looking at a single family residence? And if they do pick um, a property that doesn't fit in my box, I'm going to send them on the path of success to a local bank that would be able to help them out with a portfolio loan versus a traditional mortgage. Um, so it may not be that every I can do everything I want to do everything. But, um, you know, my goal is to help people get into financing, whether it's something that I can help them with um, or steer them in the direction of somebody else that can help them out. So. And then um, what, so obviously people are choosing these national banks because they think it's the best rate. Are you guys, you guys must be competitive or better or, you know, what? Talk we about are that competitive. Um, there is a misconception with rate and points. And a lot of people are just so rate driven. They're not looking at the total picture. So when I'm working with clients, we talk about, you know, the total cost. What's the upfront cost for the rate? How long is it going to take for you to save that in interest over the years to break even? Um, a lot of the times when you know you're working with an online lender or a national lender, they're they're giving you the best rate possible, but it could cost tens and thousands of dollars to get that rate. So it really should be a full conversation of rate and fees. Um, I have seen plenty of times VA buyers come to me and say, oh, I've got, you know, a quote for for 2.25. And then I look at the estimate and they're paying, you know, 14, 15 thousand dollars to get that rate. And that just really doesn't make sense for most people. So it's about the transparency and the accountability piece that's important. All right. And then. Um we see all kinds of different types of loans up here. Uh, could you go over the, you know, the main loans that people use and, and yeah. a little bit about each one? Yeah. So as of 2021, our conventional um, loan limit for Montana is $548,250. And so those are your generic Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac conventional financing um, as far as down payments go, that's going to depend on the type of property as well as the occupancy. So a first time home buyer with conventional financing, you actually have the option of doing 3% down. Um, if you've owned a home before and it's going to be a primary residence, it's 5%. Um, and then second homes, investment properties, those are a little bit different. Uh, you know, I always prepare people that are buying rentals to put 25% down because you're actually going to get a better rate. You do have the option of doing 20% down, but the rate um, adjustment is pretty harsh. So you're going to save a lot of more money if you can just put the extra 5% down. Um, and then FHA is a product that typic typically lenders use if there's like some credit history that just isn't up to par or maybe lower credit scores with a lower down payment, FHA is for primary residences with three and a half percent down. Um, you can put more down if you want to, but um, it definitely is a program for people that are either just starting out or just starting over. Um, and they may have some, you know, credit score challenges. Typically, that's the direction that we um, we can, you know, facilitate financing. Um, and then USDA is a program that's offered for low um, low to moderate income families um, in Montana and throughout the country. But mo since we're talking about Montana, um, USDA is sometimes available for first time home buyers and sometimes it's available to everyone depending on the county. Um, and the biggest highlight with USDA is you can do 100 percent financing, but you have to fit within the income guidelines. Um, and the, those income guidelines are are. Um, based on household size and county. So that's another reason why you should be working with a local lender so that they know those parameters and they're looking at them up front. Um, and then our VA product, it's one of my favorites. Um, I love giving back to um, our service members that sacrifice everything. Um, and so VA is available for a primary residence purchase. And um, yeah, there's a lot of 
awesome options with it. You can do 100% financing over the 548. So I have helped a lot of clients buy a million dollar home with literally zero money down, which is pretty awesome. And then we have our jumbo financing. And sometimes you'll hear lenders say that jumbos are a big jumbo pain in the butt. Um, they are investor specific guidelines. So they're a little more tricky than our traditional conventional loans. Um, and when I mean tricky, I mean there's additional rules and restrictions. So uh, property type, some of them, some of the jumbo investors do not like like log homes. Um, some don't want to see parcel sizes larger than 10 acres, um, but we have multiple avenues for jumbos. And so I would just encourage again to um, have a strategy with, with your local lender and, you know, just make sure that you're in constant communication as you're shopping for a home um, to make sure that, you know, we're lining up the financing correctly. And you kind of talked about, um, uh, you touched on a little bit, but obviously there's different types of homes that you can, you can and can't use some of these loans. Um, maybe talk about that. And, you know, I've talked about that in some of my videos and podcasts about, you know, being careful that, you know, if you are doing an RD loan or, or even a VA, um, mm -hmm. It can't really be a fixer up or could you go into that a little bit? Sure. So those government products, the FHA, the VA and the USDA, they have a more stringent um, appraisal process that's done. And they I, you're exactly right, Will, in the fact that you don't want a fixer up or going through one of those products because um, the appraiser is going to go out, they're going to inspect, they're going to go through their list that they have to check off for those programs and properties that need those repairs um, will will actually come back with the appraisal needing those repairs done prior to closing. Um, and that can be a deal breaker for, you know, buyers because it's a seller's market right now. Right. And so sellers may be a little more resistant to making those repairs or um, completing something that needs to be done. Um, I have seen homes that are halfway built um, and those are not properties that I can finance. Um, those properties specifically need a construction loan. Um, and we rely on our local banks here to do construction financing. So. Well, and the other thing that um, I guess why I warned people so much is if if they're working with an agent that doesn't understand how this works and they go ahead and make the offer and then the, and, and a lender that doesn't give them the yeah. heads up, if they make the offer and then they do a home inspection and then they get the appraisal and the people aren't willing to fix all the issues, they've just lost probably twelve hundred dollars on yeah. the cost of those because if the deal doesn't go through it's not like they get their money back for the appraisal and inspection nope it's on the buyer so <laughs> um you know we're here to help people save money from start to finish and that's eliminating risk up front and reviewing the property um you know, I have lots of buyers that I help, you know, once they've identified and they're writing that contract, looking at the property and saying, OK, these are the different programs that this property and your profile would fit into. And this is the recommendation that I have that's going to save you the most money. Um, and it's it's really helpful to have. I would say somebody that's on your team, right? Not just an application taker um, that's just marking one off the list. We're we're here as a as a financial advisor, really, um, to help them make smart decisions with their money um, and smart decisions with buying a property. So, all right. Well, um, is there any way? Or I mean, I, I have it on the screen here, but. If somebody's thinking about buying a house, uh, talk, you know, the very first thing is they should obviously get approved. Yep. Yep. Give me a call. We'll get you set up um, to get pre-approved. And then, you know, the next steps, once you're pre-approved is just to stay in touch. Um, you're going to get some emails from me. You're going to get phone calls from me. Um, just making sure that you don't have any other questions. You know, this, this process is very, um, cumbersome, especially when you're, you know, in an active 
market like Montana, where everyone wants to come here and everyone wants to buy, um, to, to be able to rely on somebody to give you answers in a, in a timely fashion. So, well, and, and the big thing that I tell people too, is they need to call you first before we start looking at houses and because the market's so crazy and because you have to have everything ready to go in order to make a good offer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people all, they skip ahead and they want, they want to look at houses before they've even been approved and know yep. what they qualify for. Well, and our guidelines change all the time. I would say our guidelines change on a weekly basis. So, you know, self-employed borrowers, they think, Hey, if I just show that I'm making money now, um, that I'm good. When in fact, self-employed borrowers have to jump through a lot of hoops and we're only looking at tax returns and we need profit and loss statements and bank statements to show, you know, that income matches up with the P&L. So there's a lot of pieces that a lot of people don't see behind the screen that we do. Um, and I would just say the, the more prepared you are going into buying a home and knowing what your options are and how much you qualify for, um, the better off you're going to have a good experience instead of a disaster and lose money. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Natalie. That was great info. And uh, obviously your information is at the bottom of the screen. And if there's anything else you'd like to say, go for it. But if people want to get a hold of you, um, give Natalie a call. She's awesome. I've sent many clients to her and I've never had one complaint. So let's keep that oh, rolling. Well, I really appreciate it. I love helping people, you know, finance their dream home or their first home. Um, I'm here to help. So. All right. Well, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you for watching our video. Please call, text, or email for more information. And don't forget to watch our other videos about Montana.